Yeah, I, I'm Jackson. I have zero experience with carpentry. I studied at a school for historic preservation in Boston and learned about how things were built, you know, 250 years ago. There's a long way to go. I'm nowhere near the top. Not that I thought I was, but there's so much more to do out there. Welcome back to the Passion for Craft podcast. We are here today with a really special guest, um, more special than yesterday's special <laughs> guest. I know that doesn't mean anything because that yesterday means like 12 episodes ago, but um, here we are with Richard, the one, the only Finnish Carpentry TV. Richard, we're glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. We're glad to have you on the podcast. What? Uh, we're, we're excited to interview you. I got, I got, I got, let me take this. So, uh, formalities aside, yeah, I wanted to jump into this. So this is my idea because I've been watching Richard squirm and struggle ever since, <laughs> ever since the Dan Parrish episode where Dan laid out, you know, his business model of, of building a team of carpenters and, you know, he's got 80 or 90 or hundred and it's ridiculous, you know, yeah. business he's built there. It's, it's awesome. Um, but I think that you were impressed and, and, and encouraged, I think too, that you could have a, you could control quality and have a big, you know, carpentry company because I think the words you said, big is worse or whatever you said. I, I don't remember. Yeah. I, you just, where there's I, people, there's poop. That's the, <laughs> <clears throat> so more people, more poop. I so like you, you were, um, uh, basically saying that when you get too big, you lose control of quality. And so, yeah, I've um, heard that. Yeah. Um, and so, but, but Dan's got this business where he's actually, you know, training and doing other things. It was, mm -hmm. it was, uh, enlightening for everybody. And I think, I think the, the, the light bulb went off in your head. There was like, well, wait a minute, maybe there's something here. So, um, I have since that time watched you kind of talk about, you know, I, I want to hear about that journey. Well, yeah. and not only have you watched him, but you have pushed and prodded him like an experiment <laughs> rat and, you know, been trying to, well, here's, yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> he's like, so Richard, yeah. what do you think about what Dan's doing? So, uh, <laughs> there's truth to that. And here's why, because I went to a, um, uh, client's house that he had worked at and they had, we were talking about who was going to man the job. And I said, well, Richard would probably come over and he goes, Oh, the YouTuber. <laughs> and so it, it was buggy. It was a yeah. bug to me because I know he's a fine craftsman. I know he knows what he's doing and their perception of it was, Oh, the YouTuber. What's up guys. We're here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I know I, your videos. Aren't I, like that. uh, <laughs> I'm just like, they're way the better. <laughs> Um, Make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs> no, I actually never say that. Today um, we're pranking the homeowner. <laughs> <laughs> so put the moldings in backwards and see if they notice. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been now watching, and you know, as you've as you've hired people, and I have, uh, I do want more for you, right? And so catch us up on this this struggle this this the question is do you want more for you that is really the it question. is the question and, is the and, and, question. It's, and it's and it's the pros and cons of both right mm -hmm. i mean you've got an amazing youtube following that you've been doing for 10 plus years and uh you know that's part of who you are right and yet this new thing is uh an opportunity i think also excites you and so walk us through that because i guess i want our listener i, I said this before we started I think a lot of our listeners are you, right? They're in the mm -hmm. field, they're working, they're, they're trying to get better, they're trying to, and I think they might look at your YouTube following and go, man, if I had that, I wouldn't have to, you know, or whatever yeah. they think. And so, anyway, walk us through it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it really is the question that Jackson said. It is really, do I want to do what Dan Parrish is doing? And when we left off talking to him, I was like really in a, in a storm of like, what do I want to do? It's, it's, I could do anything, you mm -hmm. know, like I could do whatever I want really. Uh, it just depends what route and how, how much work I want to do. And I think I decided just because I feel like I am in a unique position with the YouTube that I probably just want to stay a little bit smaller. Like I don't want to be the next Dan Parrish right. like that that's a lot of responsibility and 
it's not something I, I, I don't think I ever want to do that. Mm -hmm. I think I do like to do the work. I like to be in the field. I like to have my hands on stuff. Uh, I don't like administrative stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't like managing people. Which uh, that's a lot of. Yeah. I mean, if you have like a hundred people you're dealing with, you're basically a, a man. I mean, you probably could hire someone to manage it. Like, you know, but you're man, you're, you're, you're right. You're, there's no longer work in the field at that point. Yeah. And I like doing that. <clears throat> I, I kind of consider myself, honestly, you may laugh, but I consider myself like an athlete mm -hmm. because what we're doing is physical, right? It's talented, it's skilled. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's harder than even sports sometimes like climbing around scaffolds, like climbing up ladders in the heat, like totally. So part of it is like, I like that I, I kind of see myself as an athlete and I'm like, cool, I have, and I love tools. I love working with tools. Mm -hmm. Anytime I have to go and do like a quote or some kind of bid or paperwork or like a W9, anything for, I absolutely hate it. Right. Like as soon as I sit down at the computer, I hate it unless I'm editing a video. Mm -hmm. When I'm editing a video, I love it. Right. So I, I learned that about myself. Like I don't like that. Like as, as little paperwork as I can do yeah. is the best for me. So, so to answer the question, I think I'm just going to kind of stay smaller, mm -hmm. but smaller than Dan Parrish is a lot small. Like you well, can still be big, but you know, you be, be big way and, smaller yeah, than and Dan smaller Parrish. Than and I think that's a, a big lesson. There's a guy that does window restoration out in Austin. He basically came to me with the same thing. We were talking about his business and, and he was, you know, he was almost saying, I don't really want to get big. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that is such an important lesson that is, that is not discussed or not ever, you know, uh, it's not discussed. Yeah. When I was getting, when I was, I remember in my career, there was a time that I had 60 plus people. Wow. And um, what do you we, have now? we were Just everywhere, 35, 40. Okay. And, um, and we were growing and uh we had three courthouses going it was just it was just and we lost the most money and it was it was it was an absolute nightmare i had, i built up this team and then the courthouse program at the state of texas didn't get funded for the next year so there was going to be no courthouse restoration so we went from that i said before feast or famine i mean mm -hmm. we were feasting and then there was nothing and we were shrinking back and it was a nightmare and i sit and i remember coming out of that experience going i don't want to be big right i yeah. don't want to you know and you might look at me and go you're huge and but like well, compared, compared to other to Dan, businesses yeah. right my, i got a small business mm -hmm. and so um and it's very manageable for me i didn't understand myself well enough and i think that's a really important piece that you know yourself mm -hmm. like I, I was probably 35 at the time i guess i was your age and so um I didn't know myself that well. I didn't know that I didn't like administrative. Mm -hmm. and administrative didn't get done because there was other <laughs> things that were going on, right? But I, I wouldn't have said I'm, I, I hate administrative stuff. And um, then you're one of the things that always like kind of terrifies me is like having like other people's livelihood in my hands. Like if I don't go out and make this happen, well, then this guy's family is like You're not struggling. responsible yeah. for more people. Yeah, and so that is just like, oh, I, that kind of scares I, me. It shouldn't, you know, because it's not your business, right? It's God's business. The, you yeah, know. Yeah, you know, it, you're right. Yeah. It's, it, I, I had to get to that point a long yeah. time ago because um, my business really failed. Mm -hmm. um, I remember waking up in the morning, sitting on my couch going, well, I guess this is the last day of my business, <laughs> you know, just like th this is it. And of course made it through that day. And the next, I think the next morning I did the same thing. And well, this is the last day. And it obviously wasn't the last day. And, right. and, and from that time, I feel like the Lord has carried me through so many, you know, bad times mm -hmm. that, you know, these are his people, you know, this is his business. He can do whatever he wants with it. I and so there, I, totally I know you do. And so mm -hmm. it's just like, that's how I, I don't look at that. I, I look at this as a, as the faith of the mustard seed and this tree, this largest plant has grown. It's supporting all these different people and that's all him. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not me. And, and I still pray for my people right every day, yeah. right? Just say, bless us, you know, help us. 
but they're really his people. So yeah, yeah, I need to I need to kind of step out of that like control position and, and let God like kind of have more control there for sure. Because I'm like very like I just feel like I have to control everything. So. Yeah, I think there's a good balance there too of just like <clears throat> like a middle ground between what both of you are saying because it's just put in the the work that you need to do. And then let God take care of the rest. So mm-hmm. if you're like faithfully working there, it's like after that point, it's out of your hands. You can right? only you do, can what, only you do can what you do. can do. You can't force people to do stuff. But I right. think that I, so first step, you realized, you know, on the thing was you realized it didn't want to be big. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's I think that's huge. And for you guys listening out there, you know, who feel this, you know, uh, pressure. pressure, right, to be big, to grow, to have this name, to have 10 trucks in the neighborhood, whatever the, whatever that goal is that's about to being big. 11 trucks. Let, let it go, this right? This just 11. Um, Turned up to 11. There's a, there's a uh, number of guys out there who um, are thinking, you know, what does my business look like in five years? Uh, and Oftentimes, you'll, I was in remodeling advantages groups, and they would we would roundtable, and everybody would talk, and these guys would set these goals. I want to be at you know six million next year. I want to be at ten million next year, and one of the the guys, uh, the moderators, kind of looked at looked at the guys. Go uh, on your balance sheet. It looks like you're losing you know hundred thousand dollars every year. You plan to go to six million. <laughs> Do you realize you're probably going to lose money at that stage too? And it, it and it was a light bulb for everybody. It was like, oh yeah, I guess I better <laughs> figure out what I'm doing. And you know, anyway, learning and thriving in that lane that you want to stay in and not feeling like you have to grow is is a, is a really important step. Well, another thing I think people don't talk about enough too is like um, your family. Like your family is right. huge, and I've worked so much to where my wife is like, you have to do something else. Like something has to change because. We don't have a friendship. We're not spending any time together. Right. You're not seeing the kids. And I think that was like in my late 20s mm-hmm. when that was happening. And then I just realized like, you'll see it too with your child, mm-hmm. but I have, <laughs> it's like the kids put like a time stamp on your life right. to where you're like, whoa, time is going by and like you're seeing them grow. So I have like five timestamps mm-hmm. <laughs> that I, I can see and I'm seeing like, all right, my daughter is now a little too cool for me. And I don't like that. Right. I need to spend more time with her right. because she is like, like not like, like she's just getting into that preteen like era. Totally. And then I'm like, okay, I have like a limited amount of time to teach them like the values and things that I care about mm-hmm. before they're gone. So right. I'm like, do I really care about money that much mm-hmm. or do I care about people? And to me, like the guy who's like, oh, I want to be six million. I don't want that at all. I don't, I actually would rather um, not be wealthy. Yeah. Like I actually pray like, Lord, don't, don't give me like mass wealth, mm-hmm. but also don't like give me poverty. Cause right. there's like a proverb about that, you mm-hmm. know, just give me convenient for me. Right. So I can stay focused on what really matters. I don't want to be like the next, you know, Jeff Bezos or mm-hmm. you know what my Musk. deal is on that I just say you know daily bread yeah just that's just it. enough yeah. for today I don't need that's to worry it. about you know but daily bread that's mm-hmm. what I need yeah because it keeps you humble you know you, you're like you and I've saw it in myself when I'm making more of an income I mm-hmm. kind of like change a little bit mm-hmm. I'm like oh okay All there, right, there, I, I got this and yeah. then like when you get <laughs> cut back a little bit God's like hey Hey, you know, let's remember who's in charge here. <laughs> yeah. like, Money oh, has please. a funny way of making you think you're smarter than you are. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, there, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of clients who have a lot of money who will talk down to you a little bit because yeah. they think they're smarter. Mm-hmm. Look, at, look at what I've done. Look at my career, right? Yeah. Look. look. You're like, okay, yeah. okay buddy. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, right, give me a list of names. Who, who are you talking about? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I saw, like, my kids, like, growing up, and they're still so young and they're mm. fun. And I'm like, you know what? I need to enjoy this because this is I can know I, I can always make money later mm-hmm. on and I can always provide. And, mm-hmm. you know, I I plan to do carpentry. I don't have any other plans, you know, yeah. I plan. And that's I want to stay healthy and just be able to climb up ladders and everything. So I, I like what you told me. It was really encouraging a uh, couple I don't even know if it was on an episode, but may have just been talking like, where do you see yourself? Do you want to be like a builder? 
And I was like, no, I kind of want to see <clears throat> how far I can take the carpentry thing. And mm -hmm. they were like, I like that because everyone thinks they want to should be the builder. And I thought that was encouraging. <laughs> well, it, it, there's a hierarchy on the job site. And, you know, when I was doing trim carpentry for other guys, I always looked at the builders like, you know, that guy's in charge. That That's that's because because there's no ladder there's no one through nine that yeah. you know you're at this stage in our mm -hmm. industry you don't know how good you are mm -hmm. and so the the metric then becomes well who's the most successful on the job right mm -hmm. well, you know and whether the builder is or it isn't it looks like he is because he's selling everybody and he goes, a lot of times where he's not <laughs> most of the time <laughs> he's not okay so uh, th there there becomes the reason i was saying that is because i didn't want him thinking didn't want him being envious of my job, you mm -hmm. know, as the builder, because there's a lot of times, especially when the business wasn't going good, I said to Chrissy, I just want to put my tool bag back on and go back out. And, and I had the most fun when I, was, when I was building and making things in the field. Yeah, it is fun because like, I, as much as I like dealing with people, I do like dealing, talking to people and having conversations. Right. When I'm working, I just like to throw headphones on and then just get in the zone. Zone in. I like to, I listen to music. I listen to podcasts. Passion for craft. Shout out. No, it's a great <laughs> podcast. <laughs> but yeah, and it's it's like an escape, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas like a lot of people, their job is like crap. You know, I got to mm -hmm. do this, that, and other thing. And for me, it's fun. Yeah, like I have fun doing stuff. Totally. So who can really? There's so, not many. Who can so say guys, that. you know, take take stock, take inventory of, of, <laughs> of kind of where you are, and yeah, you know that first part of this whole thing of you guys want to be master builders, master craftsmen, one is knowing which path you want to go, but two, it's, it's staying in your lane and, you know, being content with that decision. And mm -hmm. so size is not yeah, everything. Envy and, is, is the worst, I think, because you look at other people's, whatever they got going on. Like I could look at Dan Parrish and be like, dang, like I want that and like, you know. Well, when you're young in your career, okay, the, again, I, we end up putting these metrics in our lives to see how to, to, to judge ourselves. Are we performing? Am I doing well? What, am I successful? Um, you know, you look at some YouTube subscriber numbers, you look at, you know, dollar volume, look, look at, you know, other things and other people around you and you're all, you know. Bigger yeah, number, yeah, better what, person. Where, where do I stand? Well, you know, mm -hmm. am I good? Am I, you know, and so. Yeah. Um, we in a, another metric is, you know, that, you know, I want to be the builder. Uh, I want to make more money. You know, I want to have this many guys and bigger number, better person. It's just, we need to do inventory and, and to make that decision, you know, even if it, your decision was to get bigger, it is yeah. great that you see yourself clearly and you can make that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, and we're sitting here, you know, saying, you know, we're using my perspective, but if by all means, if you're out there listening and you want to be the next damn parish, mm -hmm. go for it. Mm -hmm. yeah, like nothing's for sure. stopping you. If you're that type of person where you, people thrive on that. You know, I yeah. think we talked about when we were talking to you, you thrive on building things up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might, you may be a little bit more inclined to that than mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So talking, you mentioned the YouTube, like looking at the thing, YouTube subscribers, like, I don't even think, I mean, I guess on social media, that's a metric, but I don't think it really means anything. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I, it just... you, you always give me, let, let's kind of pivot here one, one way, because one side of the thing was deciding who you wanted to be. The other thing is you're juggling the YouTube thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's been part of your life. And like one to the listeners out there, should they have YouTube channels, right? Should they be trying to grow them and doing stuff? Well, I, I think mm -hmm. I was in a really unique position and I'll explain why, because when I started on YouTube, I didn't start to gain subscribers or get views at all. I was 22 years old and I looked real dorky. <laughs> I'll show you all a picture. I mean, I- He looks exactly the same. <laughs> well, I look even more dorky than I look now. And uh, I would go, I mean, I had my own business. I would go into people's houses and say like, yeah, you know, what What do you, I, I was doing crown a lot because yeah. the guy that I worked for, I don't know how far back we want to go, but the guy that I worked for was doing crown mm -hmm. out in Phoenix. I moved out to Phoenix for a little bit, but um, yeah, he, he, that was his whole business crown mm -hmm. and I kind of copied it. My company is called DFW crown molding, kind of a weird name. Like, I don't know why I didn't choose well, I know why I didn't choose like carpentry or something because uh -huh. I didn't know really anything else. <laughs> so crown is kind of funny. People like really desire it, you mm -hmm. know, and 
they don't have other moldings. I mean, they already have all the other moldings, but it's like, oh, I just want that crown. Right. So it's actually a, a good business model. Mm -hmm. But um, anyways, I was a punk kid, you know, coming in there and saying like, yeah, I'll, I'm here to, you know, measure and give you a price on your yeah. crown. And I look so young and funny. <laughs> so I, I was like. But you didn't start your YouTube channel for, you know. Oh, yeah, a couple of years. With the goal of the, the subscribers oh, yeah. and things like that. No, the YouTube channel was uh, John brought his camera one day and I was doing something alone. And he was he's really into uh, videography and all that and he was just shooting videos of me doing it we took it home we edited it and i was like oh this would be cool because i could show this to the potential Clients. client mm -hmm. and say like hey look i know i'm some punk kid but look we actually know what we're doing right like, watch this little here's thing. before here's after here's, yeah, yeah and we're doing it so what i would do i then i started making videos and like sh showing people stuff and it's just so i could show the clients more commercial style videos exactly so yeah. you're like selling product more so than anything exactly. Else. And now yeah. they're informational. Yeah, exactly. And, and what I would do is say like, okay, I'm here to measure for whatever they want. Here, let me pop up this uh, tablet right here. Here's some of the stuff we do. Just look at that while I take my measurements. So they're right. like, oh, okay, that's oh yeah, you know, like they're kind of intrigued by it. And then since I'm the one You're that's actually totally hypnotizing your client, you pull this little lab <laughs> screen up to look at the twirl, look at the twirl, and then you, you know, you come back and they're like, yes, Mister Richard, what do I do? I'm well, uh, maybe, but <laughs> yeah, yeah I just I put that there and then. They're like, oh, and it's actually you in the video. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, well, we do all of it. It's just me and my brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. like, okay. And basically, yeah, when can you do it? You know, when can you start? Mm -hmm. And um, So it really sells them. Yeah. But then one of those videos that was meant for the homeowners got, like, I woke up the next day. It had, like, 64,000 views. I was like, <laughs> what? Like, who's watching this? Like, yeah. this isn't, even John was like, what? People watch people put in crown. <laughs> This is before YouTube was big at all. Right. This is before there was like a, a niche for everything. Now you've got, I mean, if you can think of it, it's on there. Mm -hmm. Underwater basket weaving. Yeah, know, there's like. a really great <laughs> video on that by Underwater Basket Weaver. No. <laughs> well, when YouTube was first starting back then, if you had a niche thing, mm -hmm. I mean, you were going to blow up mm. because there wasn't so much saturation of right. people like, hey, look at me screaming for... Now I think people are just worn out. Mm -hmm. Like people are just so like sick of just being screamed at for attention. Right. Whereas back then it was like, oh, look, there's a molding guy. Well, oh, I think, look, there's a painting guy. I you think know? there's been like an actual change in the YouTube model and it's more people are looking for quality content now instead of just the thing that they know of. Yes. Because it was like, like what you're talking about is like, oh my gosh, there's a crown molding guy on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been that. There isn't that. Yeah. This is the only crown molding guy on YouTube. And now it's like, there's 56,000 crown molding guys yes, on YouTube. exactly. And now it's like, who's got really helpful things or what, what applies to me? How can I relate this yeah. to me? And now you're kind of competing video quality. Mm -hmm. It's got to be 4K audio quality. Mm -hmm. And then also your work that you're doing. So going back, I was, there was no other crown molding guy. I was the one. So I, the that's guy. why I'm saying I was in a unique position. It, it could have been whoever's listening to this. If you started your channel, then it would have been you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really believe that. Well, you would have had to have a Pump work ethic. Yeah, yeah. But, um, there was nothing special about me. That, mm -hmm. That's, there's nothing special. I just hit it at the right time. And, that's pretty much it. That's so but, I don't but really to your credit, because you're playing it really humble, but also to your credit, you have adapted with the times and mm -hmm. started making more applicable content. But let me let, let me go back. I agree. The uh, yeah, quick compliment. Let me talk about this. <laughs> you didn't you didn't the point is you didn't start to do the the build views. You were doing it almost as a marketing tool. Yes. How, how long was it before the views thing started That's a good question. happening? Um, I mean, it blew up. It was probably like a year. I remember YouTube sent me this thing that was like, um, Hey, you know, you, now that you've reached a thousand subscribers, you can be a partner and we can put ads on your, uh, your videos. And that's when I was like, I don't want, I hate ads. So I was like, I don't want ads on my videos. Forget you guys. So I just ignored the thing. And then, um, one, I was, I watched these fishing guys, these bass fishing guys, 
uh, Lunkers TV was one that I followed a lot, and uh, his account got hacked, and it said that he was making his income that month was thirteen thousand. Yeah, from making fishing videos, like the the hacker displayed his dashboard right. and showed it, and I was like. Oh, that's what that thing was about. And <laughs> that's was what like, that ad thing was about. So I went back and I was like, where's that email? And I was like, yes, let's join the program. <laughs> uh, because I'm like, these guys are making money fishing. And, and you know, I love capitalism. I love that yeah, you can yeah. do whatever you want. And if you find something that generates income that's valuable and not hurting anyone else, mm -hmm. I mean, blow it up, it, you yeah. know? So uh, how many years? So if you started it 10 years ago, you know, two years not doing any ads about a year and a half to two years yeah just kind of like fighting to that one i'm not even fighting just gradually building up to that 1000 mark without knowing anything about mm -hmm. anything just when did it uh and what year did you start uh did it work as far as bringing people in when i clicked that email yes for so the algorithm or something they were like okay because back then youtube they wouldn't put ads on your videos if you weren't in the partner program. Right. Now they do it to everyone, whether right. you're in it or not. It's just whether or not you get a cut now. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So back then they wouldn't do it at all. So they wouldn't promote your stuff. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I clicked yes, it was like a, like it skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. I went from like 1,000 to like 4,000 that month and the next thousand. I mean, it doubled. It pretty much mm -hmm. doubled. Then I was like at, 30,000 subscribers, subscribers, right? subscribers, yeah. Yeah, not money. It, it took a, <laughs> I never got to 30,000 yeah, yeah. a month. Uh, but I went for 30,000 one month, and then I think in one month, uh, the whole like construction industry of YouTubers like doubled. Mm -hmm. Like we had uh, 30,000, and then at the end of that month, I had 80,000 subscribers. Wow. Uh, it was, I'm telling you, it was like the Wild West. It's mm -hmm. not gonna happen like that again. I don't believe so. Wow. It's kind of stagnated. Uh, that could be me just being pessimistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I could do other things to try to make, but I just don't really think. I think it's kind of dead because of saturation. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm kind of a pessimist <laughs> in that. But <laughs> what is, uh, um, when did you have to make the decision, I don't need to work anymore, you know, or, or I, I can slow down or whatever, you know, because because you're at, you end up asking your same the same question again now if you decided to go off and be the craftsman and leave youtube behind you know how did you make that decision you're making it now you had to make it sometime back then i think yeah um well my thing was like i feel like yeah this is i never wanted to quit doing you working and go full-time youtube mm -hmm. i don't think i could really ever afford that mm -hmm. because I wasn't making these big numbers, these big YouTubers are making. Right. Um, and even, I guess to answer your question, I realized like, wow, there's, there's potential for, you know, the monetization to actually pay me a substantial amount to where I could cut back on, you know, doing, taking jobs and just do stuff I want to do at my own house even mm -hmm. and get paid for it. Um, during that kind of explosion around the 80,000 subscriber mark is when I was like, wow, you know, I could take off work a little mm -hmm. bit more now and supplement it with this. Yeah. Um, but just to catch you up, that's all kind of went away. Mm -hmm. I think just because there is so many people that like I couldn't do full YouTube, YouTube full time now. Mm -hmm. Like it just it's not those days anymore. Right. Uh, I They just don't pay me enough mm -hmm. to do it. So, uh, but, but what I found that though, is that I don't think I'll ever quit doing YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think even if they said, Hey, we're not paying you anything, like just cut you off completely. I still want to do it right. because I like doing it. Mm -hmm. I like documenting and making stuff and then looking back and saying like, Whoa, look how far I've come. And also I like editing. I like putting something together mm -hmm. and I like putting things out there in the world. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't think I would ever quit, but if they came to that point, then I would probably obviously maybe have to hire more people or, or look into saying, hey, this takes more of a back seat, and then I have to do more real world work, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm kind of like right now, I'm kind of like in the middle mm -hmm. of that. Like I, I could quit it, but like I said, I won't, but <clears throat> 
I can go either way right now. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's I'm, I mean, and it's it is weird because I'm always my wife's probably is tired of sick and tired of hearing it, but I'm always like, what should I do? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Should I go more YouTube or go more work? And she's like, whatever you want to do, you know, you can do <laughs> any, any one. You right. Know? So I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah, just no, a race I, of thoughts that are always going on in my mind. Mm -hmm. I don't recommend, I don't think I answered that one. I don't recommend starting one unless you're passionate about, teaching you, yeah and you got to be unless you're paying someone to edit it mm -hmm. you got to be passionate about videography and editing mm -hmm. i don't think people realize that when they start youtube mm -hmm. well that's why i have help with that <laughs> i don't do video or net editing yeah you know, i know that's all austin yes because you will he's burn good at out it. like a son of a gun mm -hmm. if you're not in if you people it's like a new year's resolution i'm going to start a youtube you if you're not into editing <laughs> and videoing I mean, if you if you're gonna video a job, you're you you can't be charging hourly for that job because you're wasting the customer's right. time. You right. Know? That's I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I, it has to be like a bid, and then I, okay, mm -hmm. I'll take my time. And even then, there's people who have timelines. Mm -hmm. It's really tricky. It's really tricky. I remember I talked to uh, Andrew Bettis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was like. Um, you know, because you gave me that referral, and and I met him at the building in Bruise, and we exchanged numbers, and he was like, "Yeah, I want you to come look at one of our jobs." I'm like, oh, "Okay, cool." I was like, "Can I do a video on it?" He was like, "I never thought about that. Um, I don't know how we'd feel about it because <laughs> we'll be wasting, basically wasting their money." Right. And I'm like, "No, I get it. We won't do it, but I'm just asking." Yeah, yeah. Because you know, I don't want to assume. Right. And like, wait a minute, I'm paying you to do this. Totally. So, if you can, it's, it's a freaking juggling act. Right. Like, should I do it? Should I, I don't recommend it. Honestly, that's why you see a lot of guys doing stuff in their shop. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of field videos, right? There, there's some guys out there doing it, but you got to work those details out yeah. with the people who are in charge for sure. So, uh, one thing you were asked about earlier, and I think we got on a really good YouTube tangent there, but, um, I'm curious with you, uh, hearing from Dan Parrish about his like 70 or 80 guys that he's got on board there, you are going to hire another guy. Can you fill us in on how that's gone? Yeah, the hire. So it kind of, I feel like it's a God thing too. Mm -hmm. Like after talking to him and then um, just kind of all that, those thoughts racing through my mind. Well, it kind of worked out. There's a, a guy who I met. His name's Tom, mm -hmm. Tom Johnson. He's an inventor of this miter saw fence. Oh, sweet. And he's, he's been kind of communicating with me on and off for about a year or two. And um, he came over. He made, he, basically, he has this fence that he invented, and it's, it does a, a lot. Opens your miter saw up to do a lot more. So cool. you can just little stop blocks. It's really cool. But um, he's like, hey, I want to make make one for your makita saw mm -hmm. and he, he's local in arlington and i'm like cool you know i would love one on the shop saw because i have one on my field saw right so he comes over to my house and you know we're setting it up and stuff and he's like hey if you ever need help you know i'm kind of semi-retired if you know if you guys ever want help with something let me know and cool. then it was kind of like right before we talked to dan yeah and then i was like thinking like man like tom could really help us you mm -hmm. know he's been doing trim carpentry for 35 years wow he's such a a humble guy he had his own crews he was running he he said he had up to 15 guys mm. they were doing stuff for village homes and you i think you even know he, yeah. he's met I you before name, yeah yeah and um he's such a great guy like such a humble guy to where i was like yeah, can you come help us out with some stuff? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, you know, where do you need me? And mm. he's... That's a cool mentality. Yeah. And, he, and it, it works out really good because he is retired mm -hmm. and he does, he likes doing it. And I see myself in him. Like, I see, like, I like doing it too. You yeah, know? yeah. And he's like, I'm not like a, a business guy. I'm not a money guy. I just like to get my hands on stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I, I like that. You know, that's how <laughs> I feel. We're kept from the same club. Yeah. 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 Same so, values. <clears throat> yeah. And we need people like that because we can't all be business guys. Mm -hmm. Who's going to do the work? <clears throat> right. You know? Well, uh, so I'm curious with the addition of Tom to the team, um, you feel like he's been a massive help, right? So Tom is one of those guys that I would consider a master. Mm -hmm. Like 
a master trim carpenter yeah who has been doing it so long that he looks at the way that us younger guys are doing it mm-hmm. and says and basically takes us under his wing as an apprentice and mm-hmm. says hey let me show you a better way because I, I was beating my head against the wall for you know five ten years doing it this way right and then um, some other guy showed me this you know and this is how we do it and some guys like that Tom, like Tom he's like an engineer mm. like he has like an engineer's approach to it which is very helpful when you're doing carpentry yeah. carpentry or any building because you're you really I think the key to being a master is like thinking 10 to 15 steps ahead of right. what what's going on um, I mean think about uh, Valsil carving how many steps ahead are you thinking right. when you're making that shave you know gouge mm-hmm. or whatever it's like you're seeing this thing already mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, going down a rabbit trail but yeah Tom's great <laughs> so when we were talking with Dan I remember uh, you were saying I don't want to waste the money on some of these bigger jobs hiring a, a income poop uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you said apprentice. Uh, or yeah. Just hiring an entry level guy, and then trying to train him up, um, because you're working on higher profile jobs now, and y'all's team has grown and developed and is bigger. And one of the things Dan had said was, "What if you'd hire a guy, and then you you do one of those older, like I say older, the jobs that you used to do, yeah, and then like maybe it's like a lower level job, lower impact." A little bit more room for mistakes not obviously not right. taking people's money but have yeah. you considered doing any of that just after the success you've seen with Tom or are you just looking for a listers in architecture world I mean ideally it would be yeah a listers mm-hmm. but I'm not against going back and uh, doing Training other things yeah or or even just doing it myself to mm-hmm. to make an income to pay the bills because you, you could send Tom and John on to go do X big job that you're working on, like if it's a whole job or if it's you yeah, know, another big would, job that you're doing, and they I, go take care of that. And you're training a new guy. Yeah, I mean, could be good YouTube content too. But yeah, and the other thing about that, having a third person, mm-hmm. it has freed me up to go do a couple more things. Yeah, where I can say, hey, if you know, usually it's going to take all three of us mm-hmm. to do the current job that we're on. Yeah, but like, there's been days there where it's been like hey this task is only going to require two people Mm -hmm. i don't need to be there so then i go off and i do something else you know whether Mm -hmm. that's editing that's mostly Mm -hmm. what i've done like while they're there doing it i've edited yeah so it's kind of like it's a it's a crazy balancing Mm -hmm. you know juggling but yeah i could go in and take some of those you know not as high profile jobs and do do really good at them Mm -hmm. and have uh, train up a guy to to learn that for sure because that's where I learned that was my training totally. ground and it would be I mean I know I just said it but it really would be cool content because yeah. you're, you could train up a guy and be like okay hey look what like if you're with me on a job look what Jackson just did here well, this is it, terrible <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you should definitely come with us for real be fun yeah before you go off to North Bennett Street that would be mm-hmm. fun if you came with us for a job or something but uh, another crazy thing is my videos at those kind of like basic jobs mm-hmm. do really good mm-hmm. because those there's so many people who have those situations totally whereas like a lot of the the not a lot crazy- of people are restoring a palladian window <laughs> yes exactly yeah. exactly yeah. right palladian. yeah palladian that's what i said right you said palladian palladian I, sorry I plutonian know. window <laughs> exactly <laughs> Yeah, so I have options, and yeah. it feels good. I can go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just basically, if you're asking like, what am I gonna go in which direction? I'm gonna go in all these directions. Cool. I'm gonna go with YouTube, do jobs with Brent, do jobs with uh, homeowners if we have time. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Maybe I'll bring on another person, but I don't. I don't see us, you know, really getting past ten people. Yeah. Like that would be more than I would want right. to deal with. Because then that's 10 jobs worth of paperwork or five jobs if you got two per job, but yeah. Then you got to start hiring administrative people, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's, yeah. it's all in what you want to do. Right, It, it right. is, and how much time you want to spend after work doing stuff. Mm-hmm, you true. Know, it's crazy. I guess I'm just thinking of the guy out there that, you know, what is my what should my business look like is going to enjoy hearing 
what he just described. And um, so, so okay, I'm, so, so you, I know you know. So I'm sitting there. You know, how do we encourage that guy? And, you know, I think most people are not going to be YouTubers. I think 99 percent of people are not going to do it. I think probably I think 75 don't want to do it. Based on what you've said too, you would encourage those pe- those even that small percentage who do want to be YouTubers don't do it unless you like a lot of the YouTube side of stuff more mm-hmm. so than the. Yeah, exactly. I would say if you want to. You need to be on social media these days. Uh, you need to be, if you're not gonna do YouTube, you need to do Instagram. Mm. Because it, if nothing else, Instagram is your portfolio. Your portfolio. And you say, hey, potential customer, look at my Instagram. Mm-hmm. You know, And I think a big part of it, this is a really big thing. I know a lot of people are like shy of being on camera, but you need to be in some of those videos mm-hmm. or pictures because people form a relationship with you when it's like, like a lot of people told me in those early days, oh, you're the one actually doing it. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I think homeowners are so used to saying like, this guy in this nice truck comes and pulls up, gives you the estimate and just sends these random yahoos to do it. You know, it's like, they don't like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they want the experience. It's all in what experience you're trying to create and what market you're in. I was in a weird market too. I was in the homeowner market, really weird place to be. Most carpenters are working with builders, Mm -hmm. you know? So there's so much, if you guys have questions on this one, leave them in the comments below. I will go in and answer them Mm -hmm. because there's so many different perspectives to look at it. Yeah. You know, I'm just kind of speaking from mine. So, so your advice to the guy who wants to go out there and start doing a trim carpentry business is what? Be, be good. Like have the right tools, have Mm -hmm. the right skill. Um, don't be a hack. You know, don't have a caulking gun on your tool belt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just be good at what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think if it depends if you want to go work for the homeowners, well, you need to make a website and a company and mm-hmm. all that. If you want to go work for the builders, well, then you need to talk to builders. You yeah. need to reach out and say, hey. Uh, and one thing Tom told me, yeah, just good advice, the squeaky uh gear gets the oil Mm -hmm. because if you're in their ear like hey do you need someone maybe Mm -hmm. on the next house if your guys aren't available i can come and do it they're always the first one you think yeah it's like oh that squeaky gear i'm gonna i wonder if that guy's available he's Mm -hmm. been bugging me and you know i'm not saying go out and bug people but just make it known what you're doing it's like any business Mm -hmm. if people don't know you exist how are they gonna hire you yeah you got to market yourself and if you're not following yeah. up if you're not touching base with people you will Very fade important. from their mm-hmm. minds so. yeah they're gonna move on <clears throat> yeah yeah they're gonna move on to the next thing that's available and you're not gonna be able to get every job right like i have people who call me and say hey can you come we want to panel this stair stairway floor to ceiling and i had this lady the other day <clears throat> i need it done in two weeks i'm like two weeks yeah How, what you're not going to find anyone unless you hit it at the right time where like, <laughs> we're on, like I need this done like in two weeks. That would mean, okay, this job at least is going to take three weeks, right? you know, and you really, you just got to educate people. But mm-hmm. all that to say, you're not going to be able to take every job. Do you feel you're like gonna... you're quick for, um, your industry? Like, do you feel like you're a fast worker in your industry? Yeah. I feel very efficient. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, because like I just put the headphones on and I don't screw around. Right. I just get stuff done. I like to give people what they're paying for, like yeah. value. This is a side note, but I'm just curious y'all's thoughts on this. There is a <clears throat> house that's being put up behind uh, the ministry where I work. And uh, so we see the workers, you know, day in and day out. And they, one, work really weird hours. Like <clears throat> they're there really late. Like they're there until like you know, seven o'clock at night. And I'm like, what are they still doing here? But they also have like lawn chairs set up inside the house. Not a good sign. <laughs> I was like, what in the world? I've never seen that. Well, lawn chairs. It could have just been an area where they were sitting around eating, eating a meal. It could be. Doesn't mean that. But I've seen them mean. in the lawn chairs a couple of times where I'm like, huh. Well, they could be on lunch. It's but three o'clock in the afternoon. What oh are we doing yeah, <laughs> that's that might be milking the clock right there. But um, it's for a big, you know. Well, you you never. It's weird. There's this like meme or whatever where it's yeah. like you never see 
construction workers doing anything. They're always like standing there, <laughs> like leaning on a shovel. Right. But somehow the thing gets done. It does. It's weird. Yeah. But um, no, I like, uh, yeah, I like to work. I don't mm-hmm. like to milk. The, if there's no work for me to do, I want to go home. Right. I don't need to be there. Right. And then my two guys that work with me, John, who's been with me for 10 years yeah. m- more, he's the best worker ever, mm-hmm. ever. Like he'll, I'm like, Hey, can you go do this thing? Yeah. He goes and does it, comes back. What should I do next? Yeah. He tells me that mm-hmm. like every day almost mm-hmm. got that done. What should I do next? Mm-hmm. His phone rings. Can't talk right now. I'm at work. Yeah. What should I do next? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's crazy. I'm like so blessed to have. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. It never, never d- wasting time mm-hmm. giving me updates. Just got this Great. done. You know, it's amazing. And I don't have to tell them. Right. I don't have to babysit. So. Right. That's huge. Yeah. It's awesome. It's really cool. <laughs> Any final questions, Brent, for? No, I just, I thought Senor it Richard? was, it's an interesting journey that you're on and just, and you learn about yourself as a, you know, craftsman and it's been great yeah i'm i'm glad we did it i was hoping we'd get into a little bit more of the religion and politics on, <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the next, next episode <laughs> yeah. the next episode we're gonna really get controversial over here yeah um no, I'm joking. <laughs> well thank you guys for watching the passion for craft podcast like richard was saying get in the comments if you uh did have any specific questions that we felt like we were went unanswered um because richard is uh comments warrior so he'll uh i'll I'll get back at you real quick um anyway thank you guys for watching see you on the next one